I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is a Patreon review, this time for Vontae McRae, who wanted my thoughts on the 1986 film Howard the Duck. Thank you to everyone who has joined me both on Patreon and PayPal. If you ever are interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, review, re-review, movie topic, commentary, what have you, you could do it directly via my PayPal or you could do it by becoming one of my patrons on patreon certain tiers to use certain things the links to both of them are down below in the info box if not no worries but is this one of the worst films of all time no flat out no i can name a hundred movies that are worse than this from movie 43 inappropriate comedy going overboard with Adam Sandler, Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler. I saw a comedy the other day, Master of Disguise, which is worse than this. I mean, Criteria Part 3 and Alien 3 make me more mad than this movie. The Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtle movies, Feeders, Feeders 2, The Amazing Bulk, uh, Alien Origin, a film so bad I never even reviewed, Unaware, one of the most boring films ever in existence that I reviewed on here. Horrible found footage movie like that and Bidford County and the Zombie Diaries and the Star Crystal where a orange goober becomes, after killing a bunch of people on a spaceship, reads an electronic Bible on a computer and becomes a Jehovah's Witness <laughs> and apologizes for killing the people because he read an electronic Bible on the computer. The Star Crystal. I mean, Nemesis 5, I just saw and was, it was pathetic. Just like Nemesis 2, 3, and 4 sequels were pathetic. The first Nemesis is great. I just reviewed Nemesis 5. That was garbage. They're way worse than this movie. Now I told that story to tell this story. This movie still fucking sucks. I still can't sit here and say it's a good movie, it's an underrated movie, because I honestly don't feel that way. No, it's not one of the worst films of all time. It would not even be in my top 100. Leah Thompson, she does the best that she could. For what the script she's given, I think she's decent as the lead character of Beverly. Some of the special effects, I don't mind for the time of 1986, there's some charm to them. The score, the score by John Barry is actually a very, very good score. Fantastic score, honestly. There are some well done action set pieces, like a in the third act dealing with it playing 
and there's, there's some good stunt work during that sequence. It is definitely unique, but at the same time, when you're watching a movie and you're going like this, five across the eyes, I I can't sit here and say I liked the movie. I watched it a couple. I watched it a bunch when I was a kid. Cause like, oh hey, a duck. I love talking turtles, like the Ninja Turtles. So hey, a talking duck. But it's director. I know they wrote Indiana Jones Temple of Doom. I enjoy that movie. I enjoy all four Indiana Jones films. You want to know why? I have the reviews of all four of them on the channel if you're interested. Yes, including Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And this is not like me going, oh, well, a lot of people don't like it. So I no. I liked Super Mario Bros. from 1993 a lot more than this. I liked Green Lantern. I liked Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Especially the director's cut. Just because a movie does a lot of crap, I don't care. Just like if a movie does a lot of praise, I don't care. I like what I like and I don't what I don't. Simple as that. But this, one of the most... Confusing fails of logic involved with this motion picture is its script and tone. It wants to have its cake you needed to. It wants to be a kid's film, but it wants to be risque. It wants to have a film be a type of movie that has a bunch of duck puns, including I'm the master of quack foo. And then I'm like, you know what? Well, I'm the master of fuck you. But then on the flip side, he's working at a bathhouse where people are getting ready to fuck and suck or suck and fuck. And he's going to be the third party, the stuffing or whatever, the fluffer or whatever. I mean, it wants to be a movie where John Barry's score does feel like a an adventure tale da, 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 da. but when you hear that score you don't think of a film that also has duck condoms and duck tits woo oh i'm seeing in my dreams are duck tits woo again i have seen movies that have that balance of tone but i've think they did it better super mario brothers as much as people hate it i think that does a better job of having family film but a little bit of darker tone because yoshi it's not like yoshi has tits or daisy wants to fuck yoshi or there's any sexual intention even if it's a jokey manner or calls yoshi the goomba that's you know that's my boyfriend okay if you want to go that route cool but it doesn't have A bunch of dinosaurs ready to hump each other. The 99 Ninja Turtles does that well. Where it's still a kids film, family film. But there's elements of darkness. Where you're one of your lead characters gets put into a coma. The master, the sensei, is beaten and chained up. Looking ragged. But yeah, at the same time you have fun. Like That does a better job of a balance. Here... I know this has a fan base and a lot of people liked it. My, one of my dearest friends, Michael CP, he's a huge fan of this movie. Sincerely a huge fan. And you read the comments under his video. Many people love this movie. I'm sorry. I'm, I understand 110% why critics took a shit on it. I absolutely understand why. I mean, I looked at this film and I go... In retrospect, it should have just picked a side. Be a kid's film or be apeshit. Be a goofy movie or be... A... I understand it's a duck. I'm not saying you can't have series and quirkiness mixed in. I'm not saying that's an impossibility. I mean, it's a movie 
about Talking Duck, of course, there's going to be some humor involved. But even when you look at some of the comics, it seemed like they delved into that a better bearing with it. This seemed like it was just going to the extremes. If you want, if you want to go on that tightrope, it's a tough tightrope. But this is like if you're doing a tightrope and you're doing this, 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 this. It's like that doesn't work. That's not how tightropes work. And that's why I'm going to either go with a more family-friendly movie. Or honestly, they should just go on all the way with the batshit craziness. Because when you get dwindle with trying to be schmaltzy and... How do I put it? You go from a band that's called something to the effect of Satan Sluts. But then with this music and score, you almost think you're going to do another Star Wars at the end where... Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, okay, that seems like something that would be a Saturday... Saturday morning cereal and not the kind you eat but this is the same movie where even playful Leah Thompson was going to suck a Dutch dick I just I mean that mixed in with some of the performances being really spotty especially Tim Robbins I think Tim Robbins gives the absolute worst performance of his career and I like Tim Robbins as an actor. I like him as a director. I reviewed a, a few days ago, Dead Men Walking, 1995 family directed. I enjoyed that movie. Uh, Jacob's Ladder from 1990 is a personal favorite of mine. I love the 1990 Jacob's Ladder. But this is easily his worst performance. He is annoying. He's irritating. He's doing stuff like waka waka waka. He gets on my nerves. A big part of me said, I wish this character would die. Not the actor, the character. I wish this character got killed off. Could you shoot a laser beam through this? I'm like, can you shoot a laser beam through your fucking head? Until you're dead? He just got on my fucking nerves, man. And like mudding and... Someone just said, be extra campy. And Tim Robbins can work in comedy. I enjoy him in Nothing to Lose with him and Martin Lawrence. I think that's an underrated comedy, not this. That's the thing. When people say, oh, underrated comedies, I'm like, for me, that list goes to Jumpin' Jeff Flash with Whoopi Goldberg, The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy, Metro. Well, that's action, but there's some comedy elements, but that's more action. But The Golden Child... Jump a Jack Flash, Nothing to Lose, like various other comedies that I feel underrated. Not this one. And okay, you get in a sense of Howard's world, but you don't you're not there long enough and then when he gets pulled out in the first five minutes you see Dud Tits and I go Okay, you wanna take me on this journey? This is maybe more for adults. But then it does stuff with the puns and the dialogue and even the voice actor of Howard, Chip Zine. Technically, he's doing a good job, meaning his inflection of his voice, the mannerism of his voice can work for Howard the Duck. But at the same time, with this tone of voice Howard is having... I buy that voice if this was a kid's film. I don't buy that voice when it's trying to be a tough, cool character and, you know, trying to be this attitude, like, I want to fuck you with the Leah Thompson, whether he's kidding or not. Oh, that voice, I just don't buy that part of it for that voice. I know John Tuzak was one of the choices. I'm like, you know what, John Tuzak? I could probably buy that voice a bit more. And again, that's not me. I did a bad job. I think voice-wise, he's a good voice. Hell, I would pick him over Seth Green 
and the Howard the Duck, the little bits they show in Guardians of the Galaxy. But at the same time, I'm going, I did, that voice to me does work more in a kid friendly, the kid friendly, kid friendly aspects, but not in the, oh, he's cool, he's got an attitude. Because I just don't buy the attitude portion with that voice. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. Uh, the vi the movie doesn't seem like it knows where it's going because a good chunk of the plot, there's not really a plot. It's just he lands and he finds someone. Then there's a scene where he's trying to get a job. And then weird shit. I'll tell you, sometimes people look at Howard and they have no reaction. Maybe it's the Superman thing. Maybe if you put on a pair of glasses or you just put on a little hat, people are not going to notice this is a fucking duck. But then other people, they see Howard and they're so freaked out by it. And I go, well, well which is it, movie? Either people are nonchalant about the duck or people are, oh my God, about the duck. Which is it? If When he's working at the bathhouse, whatever the hell you want to call it, and working at the... Or trying to get a job and the 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 lady is gonna to try to find him a job. He look he looks like a duck. You can tell it's a duck. But again, no one says anything. Cause there's the asshole boss of his job. But then at the same time, other people, Tim Robbins, they're like, Oh my god, did you do this? Did you do that? Cause Tim Robbins for some reason thinks he thinks Howard the Duck is fucking Superman. So, that kind of does get into this script, didn't know what it wanted to do. And that's one of the big problems of the movie. It doesn't know what it wants to do. It wants to be kind of a love story, but it does not want to commit to it. So then really nothing comes of it. Because there'd be a lot of questions if you try to go with a love story, but then they kind of all pass off as a joke. But then later on, she goes, that's my boyfriend. So it's like shit or get off the pot. Are you doing shit or you get off the pot? Yeah, pick one or you don't need a fucking hemorrhoid the size of your anus. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to be Aladdin or are you going to be heavy metal? Are you going to be the Lion King or are you going to be Fritz the Cat? All films I would rather watch than this. And you know what? Honestly, an animated film, not with Seth Green. I like Seth Green, but he doesn't work as a voice. Have another person and just do a 2D or 3D animated Howard and really take a page from the comics. With the really bizarre, quirky, craziness. And go full tilt booty with it. That's even with this. It gets weird. But just go all the way. When you go halfway. But then it's like, no, this is for kids. So it's got to be, you know, Tim Robbins, Kooky. That's the thing. Like, you have all this trying to be sex and all, all this stuff. But then you have Tim Robbins acting like one of those annoying side tick characters you would find in a Disney movie, the comic relief characters. He's crazy and he's just cooty and whatever the hell he's doing. And even the first half of that film, you're wondering, is this movie going anywhere? And then it's almost as if over halfway through the flit, they went, oh shit. Uh, maybe we should have a villain in this. Okay, we have this thing, and then Jeffrey Jones is possessed. And Jeffrey Jones, he'll work as a villain because in real life he's a pedophile. I mean, sad but true. But his acting, when the overlord has possessed him, his hair, it makes it, the hair looks like he's trying to be an evil Doc Brown. And I, he just looked more goofy to me than intimidating. I'm sorry. He just looked more goofy to me. And then certain 
way he talks and I won't say monologues, but close to it, it felt like. I just didn't did not tear for him as the villain. He seemed like a villain that instead of being creepy and I can't take serious. He just almost, he does seem like a campy villain to the point he takes his fucking finger into the cigarette lighter and he, 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 he's ready to slobber and spit people to death. That's what it seemed like. So it's, again, it's like, well, what are you trying to be, movie? Which direction are you going in? I just don't understand it. And then what else with the the characters, the, the Howard, the suit? I can understand why people complain about the suit. There's some charm to it because it's practical, animatronic. It does with the bill. I think it's the bill. The bill does seem like something you would just stick on. And if you move, it would just pull off. I think the rest of the design and the eyes, they work fine. But something about the bill, again, whether it be the shape of the bill or... Maybe it need to be a bit wider. Maybe it need to be uh, just something about it. It does seem like something you would just clip on and clip off. So I, I can't really say it's a great suit. I will say the Ninja Turtle suits from 1990, 1991. Those are great suits. I can't say this is a great suit. It's there's some charm to it, but. Is there room for improvement? Yes. The music, I mentioned John Barry's score. John Barry's score does seem like a film that would fit an adventure tale in a vein of Star Wars or that sort of adventure, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, which are, despite some Serious, by a lot of serious moments, it still felt a tonal consistency. But again, you know, with some of the stuff in here, it's just like I just think that like, what were they thinking? Why were you thinking of doing this and doing that? Why some of the dialogue and the duck puns in here? I mean. If you really want to go, hey, this is a talking duck, break the fourth wall. Be really clever. That's the thing. At the end of the day, it's a comedy I didn't find funny. Because I found nothing done that was clever. Nothing done that was, I would call, smart. You could have broken the fourth wall. You could have been like, hey, let's really take the piss out of ourselves tremendously because it's a walking, talking duck. But, like I keep saying, they did not know what direction they wanted to go in. A film that, hey, kids are going to love this duck, and he's almost uh, close to a superhero. Not quite. But at the same time, you know what? There's another film that someone asked me to review. Two years after this movie, did this thing better. It's not the same plot, but Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Who Framed Roger Rabbit, if you want a film that has a more consistent tone, better attempts at having a story, humor, a blending of you know some risque stuff, the Patty Tate stuff, but you realize it's really literally Patty Tate, Patty Tate. The, the cute toy that's being killed by Dip. <laughs> But then, you know, the silliness, that does a much better job on a writing front, on a direction front, than this movie. And people go, well, what do you expect? I'm like, you know what? Two years after this, they did Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And that 
is if they want to go on a tightrope, you need a strong script. And her friend Roger Rabbit had a strong script and a good set of actors. I mean, hell, Christopher Lloyd, I mentioned Doc Brown, was more of an intimidating villain than Jeffrey Jones, who at times does seem like he wants to have the Doc Brown hair when he's possessed. And Christopher Lloyd was more intimidating with the way he looked and the way he talked and very solemn for a good chunk of it. And then his actions by killing a cute tune, turning it into nothing, melting it pretty much. I even pretty much melted the fucking thing. I mean, that's how you do it. And you know what? When you watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you don't feel embarrassed that you're watching it. Here, I do. Weird, you go for weird stuff like da, the duck wanting to bite this woman's ass who's trying to give him a job because she's sassing off to him. So what? His plan is he's going to bite his ass? I mean, bite her ass? Bite my ass. Bite her ass and then she turns around and puts the folder in his mouth. So he, it's like she knew this little guy's going to try to bite my ass. But then you go into... Her calling him Dutty, and maybe there's going to be a love story, maybe not. They don't want to fucking commit. They, again, they want to be in and out. They want to be... You can't be... You're pregnant or you're not pregnant. That's one of the, the biggest issues I keep having, that this movie has, that I keep having and keep mentioning and keep repeating. It was a poor script... Okay, yeah, they wrote Temple of Doom. But you know what? Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford and all those guys, they had their hands in that cookie jar too. I guarantee you going, nah, not this, not that. I damn fuck it to you, Steven Spielberg told him what to do and not to do. Weirdly enough, Steven Spielberg, who produced Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Steven Spielberg. Also... The person who directed this did Best Defense. A movie that was so fucking bad. So fucking awful. They were not going to release it. But then, hey, Eddie Murphy, let's film 10, 15 minutes and then plug you in. Then we release it and the film still bombed. I ranted on that piece of shit when I did my Eddie Murphy marathon. You want to see my review of it? Go back on my channel. There's a playlist that's Eddie Murphy Reviews. Best Defense is on there as a review. It's one of Eddie Murphy's, in the early heydays, one of his fucking worst. And you get the director of Best Defense to do your bid budget heavily hyped. I mean, tremendously hyped. Like George Lucas, who produced this, thought this was going to be the next big thing. And it was going to get sequels and franchises and hyped it up to the 10th power. I'll defend a film like Last Action Hero. Last Action Hero to me is a lot smarter, a lot more clever, entertaining, funny. I don't think it deserved to be the big flop that it became. Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger, I find underrated. That's a film I could put my hat on and go, no, that's a film I will root for. The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy, I'll put my hat on and root for. Not this movie. Hell, Hudson Hawk. I I don't mind. That's a movie that's weird and quirky, but I get a lot more laughs out of Hudson Hawk than this. You'd be swinging on a star. Will you come home play Nintendo with me? <laughs> that's a movie that's goofy and and but even then, weirdly enough, its tone is consistently cartoonish. It is a cartoon. And it is cons more consistent than this movie. So, positives, Leah Thompson does the best she can. John Barry does a great job on the score. I don't mind some of the songs, including the, the title track that's at the end credits. It's a bit catchy. Chip Zarin is not bad in the voice acting. I just think what is Howard trying to be this cool 
badass, it doesn't work. When it's trying to be like a kid's film, may, maybe it could work. I just, I don't know. I did. Maybe the, the tone, the director, the, all that fucked it up. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't be one of those guys that defends the film and think it's a, a gym or underrated. I think the credits, I, I understand perfectly what they were meaning, what they were saying, and I, I get it. It's one of the worst films of all time. Like I said, no, but in my opinion, it's not a good movie. It's not a good movie. That's just my opinion, though. By the way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you in the next video. Later.